Thank you, Christina. Is this on? Okay. Um, everybody here is here tonight because you've heard about the fact that the state's teacher retirement system is in, is in big trouble. If you're a teacher, you're worried about your pension. If you're a taxpayer, you're worried about your tax burden. Um, so let's just get one thing off our chest right now. Uh, over who's responsible for the situation we find ourselves in. And, and the answer is simple. It's lawmakers. It's politicians. It's the elected representatives in Springfield who serve over the last 20, 30, and 40 years. It's why we have uh, pension debt with specific just to teachers of almost $50 billion. It's their fault. But it's not going to be two or three or four hundred retired, deceased, and active lawmakers who are going to bail Illinois out of this situation. The state of Illinois is turning to taxpayers to make up for previous bad decisions. It's an absolutely unaffordable situation. We've already had a record income tax increase. The state has more money than it's ever had, and yet we're seeing cuts to general state aid to other education programs. What gives? I'm going to give a lot of numbers out tonight, I think, but there's, there's one to keep in mind. Uh, the state of Illinois right now, at a time of record revenue, everybody remember that $7 billion income tax increase that went in about a year and a half ago? Yeah. <laughs> record revenues. Yet the state cut general state aid by about $250 million in this most recent budget. The state's required payment to the teacher's retirement system this year over last went up by about $300 million. There's a symmetry to those two numbers that's not coincidental. As the obligations and the state's financial obligations to the teacher's retirement system go up, its ability to pay for other education programs is going to go down. So every school district in Illinois is facing one of two futures. Either the state can trim some of its costs and ask school districts to start paying their own pension costs going forward which is the financial arrangement that it has with counties and cities and even Chicago public schools, <coughs> or they're going to see their general state aid cut so that they can clear out budget room to pay for the increasing financial needs of the teacher's retirement system. The conversation that we're hoping to have at the Illinois Policy Institute is fine. Neither of those are desirable futures. Right? Everybody would preserve to uh, live in a better world where everybody's finances were in better shape. <coughs> And the tough truth is that's not the case in Illinois. I know it's not the case in Quincy. What can we do in a broader sense? How can we think more widely about what the state can do and what school districts can do to fix this situation, to stabilize our pension funding, to stabilize education funding, to maintain an education system that gets kids what they need that doesn't turn the taxpayers again? So thank you, everybody, here for being tonight. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Good evening. Um, I'm going to speak tonight mainly from the school board's point of view and the district's point of view. Um, I want to first thank the Illinois Policy Institute for hosting this meeting. Um, I think we all can agree that the main problem with the pension system was not caused by the district here locally. It was caused by the state lawmakers in Springfield. So for, at the forefront, this is not a Quincy Public School District created problem. With that being said, I think we have to be a part of the solution, <coughs> otherwise we're going to be forced upon us what the solution is. So we might as well get into the game and figure out what we want from that point of view. With that being said, there's a lot of things about the Quincy Public School District that makes this very difficult. We currently uh, are one of the most difficult financial situations in the state of Illinois. Um, we are on the state watch list. We are under a deficit reduction plan, one of which is only eight in the state. So our finances are very difficult. To have this program pushed down to us would mean extreme cuts in expenditures or we would have to do extreme increases in the tax rate. Neither of which I would be happy to see. So I wanna get involved in figuring out how to implement this program, how to bring it into this uh, district in a way that we can absorb it and the way that we can responsibly take it over. Because for one thing for sure is the people in Springfield have not responsibly taken it over. I just want to thank you and thank you for coming. Well, thank you very much. I want to thank the Illinois Policy Institute, Colin, Christina, and all of you for taking some time out this evening to come and talk about this very important issue that faces all of us here in Illinois. 
My name is Nick Yelvitz. I'm with the Illinois Federation of Teachers. And in our opinion, Illinois does not have a pension benefit problem. It doesn't have a pension reform problem, and it doesn't have a pension contribution problem. It has a pension debt problem. And that debt has been caused by, as Colin referred to, years and years of neglect of this state not adequately living up to its side of the promise to make contributions on behalf of teachers that go to work every day and make, make contributions out of their paycheck each and every time they step into the classroom. I'm a pension guy, so I use numbers to try to illustrate exactly where we are. And there's three numbers I, I want to focus on uh, initially. 5.8 billion. That's the pension contribution for FY 2012. Uh, it's much. It's significantly more than last year, primarily because of the, of this debt problem and the amount of money that we're paying in interest on on the actual debt. 1.8 billion. That's the amount of money that it takes to fund everyday public employees' benefits as they show up for the next day of work. So if you do the math, $4 billion is basically going towards the debt service. It's not going towards the benefits that people are earning today. It's going, through, it's going to the debt. And $800 million. $800 million is the amount of money that it costs the state to fund everyday teachers' benefits as they show up for work. This is less than 15% of that total cost. As a result, to try to say that we're going to tackle this problem by trying to remedy this, this state from this uh, $800 million or 15% of the total pension, pension debt problem is something that I feel like we, we, are, we are fooling ourselves. The payment on the debt is $4 billion, and until we find a way to, to address that problem, we are really kidding ourselves. And, issues like pension benefits and cost shifts and other things are really just smoke and mirror issues to mask the real problem of addressing the 5.8 billion dollar debt. We must address the debt. Thank you.